Everybody got their calendar? If you don't have your calendar, you got about five minutes to go get your weekly planner that we discussed that you needed for this boot camp. All right, good. I see them. Excellent. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Now, if you know of someone that is not available to get on tonight, I am streaming in the group, the boot camp group, so you can tag them in the video. Thank you, Susan. Yes, as a reminder to everyone, cameras on. If you do not have your camera on, you will be kicked off the Zoom. You can watch the live stream in the group. And I'll get started in just three minutes. It's so nice to see everybody's face. Hey, Paulette. Hey, Sulan, how you doing? Hey, Danette. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. me good evening great evening Hey, Director Brown. Hello. I'm sorry. I was finishing up a call. I'm here. Not a problem. All right. We're going to get started in just one minute again. Make sure you are on camera. If you are unable to be on camera, please excuse yourself and you can go into the group to watch. Good evening, everyone. Great evening. Hey, Natisha. Thank you, everyone, for respecting the rules. On camera, on camera. Thank you, thank you. All right, it is 9.15, and welcome to week two of boot camp. Um, I am so proud of, uh, I'd say probably the majority of you have done the private launch. So 
If you launched, if you had a private launch, I want you to type in the chat, I launched. And let's see who actually ran the play for week one. Aisha, Ashantis, Ethel, I see you, Beverly, Norma, wow. Wow, look at that, look at that. Excellent, Damaris, Michelle, Danette, excellent. Janae, good, good. Paulette, Susan, Norma, Chandrika, Josephine, Johanna, excellent, wow. Director Brown, was your um calendar as packed as mine was doing these launches? Listen, speaking of calendar packed and doing launches, I couldn't believe the people that reached out Friday. You still got availability? What? <laughs> Do I still got availability? <laughs> that was filled up on Tuesday. Right. So, yes, I mean, back to back to back, and I loved it. I Great did job. too. And you know what? This is what our calendar should look like mm -hmm. as leaders. Yes. Right? Um, how many gold builders on here helped facilitate some of the launches for people? I know, um, yes, Josephine, how many did you do? Oh, wow. I did a total of um, three business partners. Four, actually. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for stepping up. I see Janae did, Rochelle did. Oh, Rochelle, you did invites. Okay, good. Good. Anybody else help launch? Even if you weren't a gold builder, did anybody say, hey, I, I know how to do the launch. I can help. Anybody? Norma, awesome. Great job. Great job. How many of you that was your first time launching. You had never launched before, or maybe you gave pushback. Um, just type in first launch in the chat. If that was your first time launching. Dawn, excellent, excellent. Damaris, good job, good job. Johanna, wow. Cherie, Sulin. Excellent, 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 excellent. All right, here's my next question. How many of you got a new sign up as a result of your launch? Anybody get a sign up or a commitment date? If you got a, a new BP, type in new BP. And if you got a commitment date, type commitment date. Okay, so what we got? Sharice has one for tomorrow. Congratulations, Anne. Anne got a new BP. Good job. Norma got a commitment date. Okay. Beverly got a commitment date. Alicia got a commitment date. Kimberly, congratulations. New BP. That's what I'm talking about. Ashanta's got a commitment date. Josephine, commitment date. Um, Paulette got three commitment dates. Wow, for tomorrow. Kahaya commitment date, Shandrika commitment date, Destiny two commitment dates, Sulen got a commitment date, Janae two for her downline. Wow, wow. April has three commitment dates. Director Brown, what are your thoughts on all of these commitment dates and the new BPs? This is, it makes me think about how the more we launch our business, the more commitment dates and new business partners we will have. So although this was for some people it was your first time launching, but now you should see how these launches are beneficial. And of course, it is not always a private launch. You can launch on a regular team presentation, but this is how we get those business partners by always, always launching our business. And all we're doing is putting our business in front of people every single day. So I love it. I love all the commitment dates and the new business partners and make sure we have reminders on our prospect follow-up tracker. You got your follow-up date so that you know when to follow up so that you don't drop the ball. That happens a lot. I have had prospects come to me and say, I've been exposed to this business before. 
but the person never reached back out to me. I can't find them. I tried reaching out. So don't you be one of those people. Make sure you have put down that follow-up date, that commitment date, and do your part to reach back out and let's get these teams growing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now I want to address Norma's comment. She said two asked for the link, thought they would have enrolled to on yesterday, but they did not. What, let me make this crystal clear to everybody. Pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. When you have someone who says they are ready to sign up, you should call them, have them on the phone, say, hey, are you in front of your computer? Okay, get in front of your computer. I'm going to send you this link. You send them the link. You send them the sign-up instructions, and you walk them through it. That is your responsibility. What we do not do and should not do is just be sending people links and, and hope they sign up. That's not what we do. We can't tell people that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And the very first thing you say, go, go do that by yourself. Director Brown, what are your thoughts on that? And especially that's how you're going to be able to know who's serious and who's not. Because people can tell you, yeah, I'll be signing up and they're not going to sign up. They're not doing anything. But if they're saying I'm going to sign up and you say, OK, let's do this together. We're going to walk through it. Now you also get to see who's serious and who's not serious about getting started. Mm -hmm. And walking them through that process too. I remember I spoke with the lady and I said, it's just going to take you maybe about five, 10 minutes to do it. Do you want me to help you or do you want to do it yourself? And she was like, please help me. She was an older lady and she just felt so much more comfortable with me walking her through that process and getting her signed up. And also too, if you have someone that's saying they're going to sign up, some people will skip that three-way call portion as well. And sometimes they still need that call. So you got excited because you they said they were going to sign up and now you shot them your link and they still needed that three-way call. Right, right. Now, Norma, I wasn't saying that you didn't, but when, when you posted that, it reminded me because there are, show of hands, how many people are guilty of just sending somebody a link and not walking them through it? Can we be, thank you, Sharice. I, I, that's why I said it because I knew there were people who have done it. You don't want to do that. That's not professional. Um, and we have to lead by example. So we want to show them from the very beginning, you are in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And the other thing is, so let's say, for example, you have someone, they, you sent them the video, they watched the video, and immediately they said, I'm ready to sign up. Sign them up. But now the three-way is going to be the welcome call. So they're still getting that third-party validation by you introducing them to your upline director. So they're still getting it. But if they're ready to go, don't stop them and say, well, wait, I need to do a three-way call with you. No, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> if someone is ready to sign up, sign them up. Sign them up immediately. If they're ready to go, sign them up. Then schedule the welcome call with your upline director. That is for the third party validation. So now you're kind of combining the welcome call and the three way, so to say, together. But don't stop someone who's ready to sign up and say, well, no, I got to I got to do the three way call first or let me no. Sign them up if they're ready to go and then make the three way call the welcome call. Beverly, did you have a question? Or were you raising your yes. hand from- Oh, uh, no, okay. no, yes, I have a question. So in my case, uh, one of the individuals said she was ready to sign up. So mm -hmm. of course we got off the PBR and uh, went to sign her up. And in the process, when she understood, uh, I, I don't, she missed, I guess, that there would be a monthly fee. You know, the, uh, She said, well, I need to wait because I need to get my funds to make sure I have funds coming in for the uh, for the maintenance. Uh, and I was trying to share with her, if we get her started now, that we can start making money right this minute. So then I started mm -hmm. questioning myself, should I have done the three-way first? I mean, mm -hmm. any like thoughts? I said, or... it would have, 
Yeah, well, if she was backing down, say, okay, you know, let me know what date you're going to be ready. In the meantime, I want to go ahead and introduce you to our director, okay. you know, so she could meet you. So then now the director is going to do what they do to close the deal and okay. answer any questions. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sharice, what do you mean? That's the way I was taught and really didn't know any difference. Can you speak on that? Can cut the meats down. I, um, when I first joined, I always was uh, taught to send the link to whoever uh, asked for if they was ready to sign up. I never was um, given the instructions or advised to be on the phone while they're signing up. The only times that I ever been on the phone with the, a person if they're having complications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was in that but it does make sense to assist them even the instructions that i provide I'm, I'm not sure if it's the same that everybody else has those steps that are provided it does have i think it's using the old planet marketing website because it has like an extra uh like tab saying uh, like a path so mm -hmm. sometimes they do ask i'm not seeing like step number two and so it's I understand how being on the phone with them help this and will help an individual to have an easier process to sign in, to what to sign on. Right, right. Yeah. Again, we're telling people you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So but they can't no sign sense. up in the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Then you're saying go sign up by yourself. <laughs> and you're looking at your phone, hoping you get a notification. That's that's not the right thing to do. Let's yeah. take time. Have them on the phone. Anytime someone's going to sign up, if you're on the phone with them right then and there, again, say, are you near your computer, right? But if it's, you know, after a webinar or something like that, schedule the time for when they're going to sign up so that you can be available to walk them through it. But never just send someone your link and then have them do it by themselves. Because what if they have questions? What if they run into an issue and then they get frustrated and then they don't sign up at all? Right. Right. Um, what I have one tomorrow that's uh that said they will be signing up. So instead of me sending them um the link to do it on their own, I'll be on the phone with them and I'll see how it goes. Thank you. You're welcome. And then I'll post um uh, I have some sign up instructions um that I had typed out. So I'll post that in the group. Um Director Brown, any closing comments on that before we get into the social media and the calendar? I think that is good. I do want to, um, I see someone had put in the chat, they just said really good information. I just signed up a new VP on Saturday, so I will make his three-way call a welcome call. So congratulations Perfect. on the new business partner and definitely get that welcome call scheduled. And like you said, it can be that three-way call as well, but having that third-party validation, getting your new business partner introduced to other people right away is super, super important. I remember, um, Tanisha, I spoke with you. I spoke with Kim Med. I spoke with Tamikia. I spoke with so many people and everybody was so excited and congratulating me. And it, make, it made me more excited to have this business. It made me feel like I really, really made the best decision. So those welcome calls are super, super important. Absolutely. So Norma, did you have a question? Yes. Um, just want to clarify on two things, because maybe you guys can give me a better moving forward step. Of course, Director Brown always tell me, get on the phone and help them. So most of the time I jump on Zoom. But to, to be transparent, most of the times I literally get on Zoom with them and uh, register them instead of sending them the link and walk them through it so that when they sign on, they can know what to do with their people. So that's so, what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so hold on. I wanna make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. You're saying you're on the Zoom with the person that's gonna sign up. Mm -hmm. Most of the times so I'm on there with them okay. and I end up like doing it for them you're signing them up for them so you're entering the information right do not do that well, ever right that's ever. what i'm thinking now. do not ever sign somebody up for them 
where they're giving you all their information and you're typing it in, do mm -hmm. not ever, ever, y'all hear me? Don't ever do that. Let me tell you, this is what's leading to a lot of the flags. Anybody on here ever enroll someone and they got flagged by IntelliTravel? I got flagged once. So here's, here's the thing. There is a lot of fraud in travel, a lot of fraud in travel. And so let's say, for example, Norma, you live in Rochester and the new BP lives in California and you're enrolling them from Rochester. I can guarantee you it's going to cause a flag because the system sees that, wait a minute, this person has a California address, but the IP address, the computer says Rochester, New York. That's a flag. So now they got to have the investigators of IntelliTravel. Now they got to call the new BP to verify where they live and all of that stuff. And guess what? If it's the end of the month and you need that one person to hit your next level, you're screwed. We don't, this, let me ask you this, Norma. And I know you did it with the best intentions because you just want to help. But how is that helping the new business partner know how to sign up their business partner when they get one? Okay. It doesn't. So that I usually share my screen with them and show them step by step. So that's what I'm saying. I feel like I should be mm -hmm. letting them get the link and then I walk through walk that walk them through did all you, the corner. Let me ask you this. When you when you join the business, did you enroll yourself or did someone enroll you? I was given I was sent that blue thing that shows you step by step how to do it and I did it and if, when I did have issue I just called Josephine and she tell me the next step to do it. Okay, so let me ask you this then. You enrolled yourself, so what prompted you to not duplicate that going forward? Okay, I usually do it a lot. And then I guess when I started having a lot of Jamaicans and they were having a lot of issues, mm -hmm. I think that's when I started going back to okay. starting okay. to help them. Yeah, a lot of times when we're enrolling people internationally, the, the problems come up. But guess what? That's even more of a reason why they need to do it themselves so that when they have the same issue, you know what I'm saying? Enrolling someone from another country, they learn. But I'm just don't don't ever do that, guys, because you don't want to have <laughs> Director Brown. I don't, I, because they haven't dealt with the end of the month trying to hit your numbers to make sure you don't miss your bonuses. Like I, unless no. you've been through it, I can't. No idea. That was the same thing. I went through that with the three star run. It was like three people flagged and I'm like, oh, so now we still got to keep on going because now that affects your numbers. If someone is flagged, you officially do not have a new business partner because they're right. not in the system. Exactly, exactly. So don't do that. Um, allow them to enroll themselves. The Zoom thing is still fine so that you can kind of be there as a support, but just let them do it themselves. This is how they're going to know how to enroll their new business partner. And always remember this, everything duplicates good and bad. All right, so let's get into the topic for tonight. Y'all ready to get into this social media? Yes, I am so excited about the topic for tonight um, because this is going to be where you really, really start to learn how to create your DMO. When to do this, when to do that, scheduling this, scheduling that. And so where's my notes? The first thing we're going to talk about is cleaning up your social media, cleaning up your social media. <clears throat> Director Brown, you want to lead with this? I do. I would love to lead with this because it was actually something that I did immediately as soon as I got started. So I wasn't told to do this. You know, uh, my sponsor, Director Rayleigh, didn't tell me, hey, go fix your Facebook page. I decided, okay, I'm a business owner. I want people to know I'm a business owner. So I'm going to have to switch some things up. With, our, with us having our business online, think of your Facebook page as your storefront. 
that's your store, right? So somebody riding past your store, you send somebody a friend request, they are now coming to look at your business, to look at your storefront. What does it look like? Does it look like they would want to do business with you? I look at my page periodically. I scroll through my own page and look at my page as if I was a stranger. I just sent me a friend request. Would I want to partner with me? Would I want to book a trip with me based on what my page looks like? If somebody sends you a firm request before you accept it, what do you do first? Just put in the chat. What's the first thing that you do when somebody sends you a firm request? Because I know y'all just don't accept it. I hope not. You check them out. You look at the picture. You look at their page, search their page, check their profile. They doing the same thing to you. So what is on your profile page? The first thing they see is your picture. That's the first part. The first thing they're going to see. Your picture should be a picture of you. Not of your husband, not your cats, not your dogs, not all your kids. You. Who are they going to be doing business with? Who is this person that just sent me a friend request? Mm -hmm. The next thing they're going to see is your cover photo. That cover photo, have it be, I mean, it could be travel. If you want to put your family in that uh, picture, it can be your family. But again, something that's going to stand out to intrigue them to even want to scroll through your page and look at it. After they see your picture, they see your cover photo, what's the next thing that you can see when you go down just a little bit more? What's that next spot? Not the posts, not before that, before we get to any, the bio. Thank you, Shandrika. There's a spot for a bio. What do you have in your bio? Of course, you want to put, you know, wife, mother, whatever, but also you are a travel business owner. Put right there. When somebody comes to your page and they look at that picture, that bio, your cover photo, those three things alone should let them know who you are, what you do and how you can help them. Mm -hmm. Who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. Now they now if the bio stood out to them, the picture looking good, now they're gonna go down a little bit more. They're gonna start looking at your posts, looking at your content, seeing what you're talking about. If your first post is something crazy, they're not gonna accept your friend request. We'll just say something crazy. <laughs> After the first one, they're going to keep going. So now we got to have something, of course, about yourself. You don't want it to just be all travel, travel, join my team, join my team, because now you look spammy and that's going to turn people away as well. So you want to let people share who you are, you know, funny things about you, your family, your children, whoever. But at some point during that scroll, there should be something about your business. At some point during that scroll, there should be some type of peak interest and they should not have to scroll far. Sometimes when I'm looking at pages, I got to scroll so far down before I see anything about your business. So make sure it's being mixed up with your business, your personal life. I think there's a, a 80-20 rule on your uh, personal profile, 80% about you. 20% about your business. People are going to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. If your whole entire page says, join my team, join my team, join my team, start your business, boop, 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 they, they don't know nothing about you. So you got to share stuff about you. And before they accept your firm request, just like before I decide to walk into this store, this is a storefront, before I decide to walk into this store, um, what does it look like on the outside? If I walk past a store and the window is cracked and the blinds is looking raggedy, I'm not going to go in there. So if they come to your page and the blinds, you got sheets up on the window and the, they're not going to accept your firm requests. And now here's another important thing. If I decide to go into this store, is the door open? So mm. is your profile public? Because if I want to look at you, I want to check you out. You just sent me a firm request. But now you expect me to accept this firm request and I can't see anything about you. This is your business. Your profile page is your storefront. Can they even look inside your store? 
Back to you, Director Burke. That's good. That's good. So let's talk about your profile pic. It should not be an avatar. It should not be a photo of you standing in the bathroom mirror where I see you took a picture of a reflection of yourself. That's tacky. Let's not do tacky. Let's operate with a spirit of excellence. If you, go, if you went to church today and you got all dressed up to go to church, guess what? You should have took some nice headshots of yourself while your hair was done, your makeup was done, clean shaven. It should be a nice, crisp, professional looking headshot. I didn't say go spend some money and do a photo shoot, but you better master the selfie <laughs> or get your spouse or someone to take a nice picture of you with a nice background. It should be bright. It shouldn't be blurry. If you got an old phone, upgrade it to one that has a better camera because this is your business. Now, early, early on, and let me say this too about the, the cover photos. Again, think about who you want to attract because social media is all about attraction marketing. Who do you want to attract? If you want to attract more people who want to travel and book travel, then yeah, you're going to have a travel background, right? You, if I look at Susan's background right now, she got Santorini, Greece, right? So if she wants to build her and tell a travel business and really put it out there, she's a travel agent, then that's the background you're going to go for, right? But if you want to build your background should scream, you're an entrepreneur, you're a CEO, you're a boss, somebody or another. Because you want to attract other entrepreneurs, people that are business-minded, right? The people that are business-minded are going to be the ones that want to build. So again, the, the beaches and the palm trees, that's all great. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, if you're looking to attract business-minded people, then your cover photo should be more business-minded. Now I'm going to share my screen real quick um, just, just to show what my background cover photos. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't get any more clear than this, right? Doesn't get any more clear than that. So again, think about who do you want to attract? And so it's not about what do you like you might love pink and you're like, oh, I've seen this nice graphic with all these pink colors, but it's about attraction marketing. So your cover photo should speak to who you want to attract to the business. Uh, Norma? Um, thank you so much for talking about the background, the cover photo. So Director um, Burke, what would you say about if you want to scream both sides of the business? both agent and rep at the You're same You're gonna time. do that in your post and we're gonna talk about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Susan? You're on mute. You're on mute, Susan. Um, with the CEO cover photo, like how often should we be changing that? Like- Totally up to you. Totally okay. up to you. Totally up to you. Okay. Again, I'm not saying that any cover photo that someone has is wrong. I'm just, I'm just giving you, I'm letting you know, social media is about attraction marketing. And so if you keep attracting the wrong type of people, these are some of the things you should be looking at changing. The other thing is your name. It should be your first name and your last name. Not Tanisha, I'm getting it in in 2023, Burke. Crystal, I'm blessed, Brown. There's some people's names. I don't even know who you are because of the, the name on your profile. So do you really think I'm taking you seriously as a business owner? I'm not. April, blessed and highly favored Potter. Like, nobody's taking you serious. Real professionals are not taking you serious. And I get it. When you first joined Facebook, it was to keep in touch with family and friends. I get that. We all 
that was why we joined. That's why it was created. But now you're CEOs and you're running a potentially multi-million dollar business and that's what you go, you still gonna go with that? Director Brown, you wanna speak on that? It is, I mean, in some stuff for me. So let me just say, let me go back again. So when I got started, I wasn't directed to change anything. I just, like Director Burke said, you're going to start attracting people. You got to know what type of people you want to attract. So I actually went on to YouTube and I just started looking through, um, what was I looking at? Like just advertising myself as a travel agent, looking at stuff like that. And in the midst of searching YouTube, I came across attraction marketing. You know, after you look at so many videos, something else is going to pop up. And when I started to look at attraction marketing and you guys can go on the YouTube and look that up, basically it's a way for you to market yourself and attract people without you having to do the join my team, join my team, join my team, just from the way that you are putting yourself out there, they are attracted to you. And you want people to take you seriously. So even just knowing your name, like sometimes I'll come across people, I'll meet people at events and they're telling me, I'm looking them up on Facebook. Oh no, it's, you know, one of those names, like director getting money. I wasn't thinking to search getting money in the search bar. I was looking for your actual name. And like, even as business partners, I don't take you seriously. So I'm not even gonna, I don't even want to prospect or bring anybody into my business on my team that's like that. And it's the same thing when it comes to networking with other business partners. You, This is not professional. I don't want to be... Um, surrounded or around anyone that is unprofessional so people are going to look at you a certain type of way they don't want to do business with you they don't want to network with you they don't want to connect with you because you don't even have the your name who are you so those are just little things but it makes a big difference, mm -hmm. big, big difference. Yeah. and the other thing let's talk about the bio so when Planet Marketing, when I first joined the business, the company wasn't even a year old yet. So we ain't had no documentation. So I was not putting out there the Planet Marketing name. I wasn't putting out the IntelliTravel name. Everything was, I wanted people to reach out to me to find out what company I was with. That is what I, that was my mindset in the beginning. Fast forward. We are now seven years old and the documentation is through the ceiling. You want in your bio, and this is my opinion, you want to have that you are a planet marketing rep. You are a planet marketing rep. You are not a planet marketing agent. You are a planet marketing rep. That should be in your bio. You are an IntelliTravel advisor. That should be in your bio because see, now we're about to go into momentum and there are people who just like director Brown was saying, someone had piqued their interest before and never followed up with them. And they didn't think much, much of it because they weren't ready. Now they're ready. And they're like, I can't find that person that showed me the business. And guess what they're going to do? Hashtag planet marketing in the search bar. And if you have planet marketing in your bio, you may be the lucky person that has a random person reach out to you saying, I want to join the business. I have had that happen to me several times. I have several business partners on my team because they did a search and I came up. Again, that's not the way it was in the beginning when we did not have documentation. But now that we have the documentation, I promise you, you want people to go to your bio. As a matter of fact, the more of you that have Planet Market in your, bio, in your bio, the faster we'll get to momentum. Because everybody's going to be like, Planet Marketing is everywhere. I want to get on board. I don't want to miss it. Fear of missing out. FOMO. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? 
That is, so I'll be transparent. When I first got started, I was told to not put it out there, right? You want people to come to you. You want people to ask you questions. You don't want them to go look into it, blah, blah, blah. But as Director Burke said, people now know about Planet Marketing and they are looking for the person to partner with. Somebody had made a post. Does anybody know anyone a part of Planet Marketing? Someone that I was prospecting and she told me that she's in California. She told me she's not interested, doesn't want to do it. But if I know anyone, I will send people your way. So someone on her friends list made a post. Does anyone know anyone that's a part of Planet Marketing? She tagged me. He messaged me and said, hey, I would like to get started. And I said, well, how do you, you know about Planet Marketing? Have you seen information? Yep, I saw the information. I tried to find the person that I spoke with. I can't find her. I already know that this is what I want to do. At the time when we spoke, I wasn't ready, but now I am. So he made a post of who is a part of Planet Marketing and a prospect that told me she was not interested, but she will refer people to me, tagged me on that post. And that was the first time the light bulb went off and it was like, people are actually looking for people that are a part of Planet Marketing. You want people to know what company you are with. So in the beginning, again, I was like, no, it's, you know, don't talk about it. Don't post it, blah, blah, blah. But now I want you to know that I'm with Planet Marketing so that you know you can partner with me. Yep, absolutely. And the other thing too, there are some people, so here's where we have to go with the balance and stuff, because there are some people who have been just promoting the travel side, but then that person is looking to make the money on the marketing side. And so if you're not showing that you're equally building on the marketing side, then they're thinking you're just a travel agent and they're like, okay, I need to find somebody else. Uh, you know, let's say, let's say uh Lawanda. All she has is travel, travel, travel all over her personal page. And she has nothing about financial freedom and personal freedom and time freedom. But then I'm looking for personal freedom and time freedom because I hate my job. I'm going to I'm not going to want to partner with her because she's only focused on the travel side based on what I see on her social media. I don't know for sure. She might be killing it on the marketing side, but I don't know that because all I can do is judge from what I see on her personal Facebook page. So this is important, again, to have it in the bio and to make sure that your personal page is balanced because there are people, and keep in mind, everybody joins this business for a different reason. Not everybody wants to build a team. Not everybody wants to have six or seven figures. Not everybody wants to book travel. We got some people on here who don't want to book travel at all. They just want to build teams. We got people on here who just want to build teams and or, or vice versa, right? So balance, write the word balance and put an asterisk next to it. You got to have balance on your page so that when people go to your page, they see that you are actively doing both, right? Now, if your intention is, to build clientele on the IntelliTravel side, that's your main focus, then 80% of your time, you're gonna have travel stuff and maybe 20% is gonna be the marketing or it might be the other way around, right? But there, there just needs to be balance. The other thing is I call it the three scroll rule. And I want each of you, we're gonna do this test right now, this exercise together. I call it the three scroll rule. When you send someone a friend request, you have about one, two, at a max, three. Sometimes it's just two scrolls before they make a decision of whether or not they're gonna accept your friend request. So I want all of you right now to go to your Facebook page and I just want you to do three scrolls. And I want you to list, type in the chat three things that someone would learn about you just from your first three scrolls. And here's the main question. From the three scrolls, 
do they know you have a business? And if not, you got work to do. Do they know that you're even in the travel industry? If not, you got some work to do. Do they know that you're looking to partner with someone? Shaheem said the Giants went, go big blue. <laughs> Invite to business launch in a comical post. That's good. Martina said, I have a pet. I eat healthy. I have a business. Okay, good. Okay, Damaris, let's talk about it. Damaris said no. Okay, so talk about that, Damaris. And thank you for putting that in there. Um, I actually haven't been doing anything. Um, I'm not computer savvy. Me and pictures, everything is hard for me. So I'm technically really working slow. Um, but these are great ideas. I don't get on Facebook like that. So um, Facebook is, like you said, it was just for family. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I did when I first got it, I was told, put your relaunch. That was the only thing that I put. So I literally have not put anything in because I wasn't too sure what I need to put, what I'm supposed to be doing. But this boot camp is amazing for me right now. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm going to show you something that will help you, Damaris, and others. Again, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is called Lifestyle by Tanisha, uh, let me show you what it looks like. Here's my YouTube channel, Lifestyle by Tanisha. And then there is a playlist called Business Education. Every training that I've done um, to help the team is in here. And if you scroll down and look for this rainbow, Marketing on Social Media 101, um, this would be a good place, Damaris, for you to start to learn, um, you know, what to put on your social media and how to clean it up and all that other good stuff. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so let's see. Susan said travel packages for foodie and a positivity quote. Okay, good. Uh, Destiny said they would know that I'm a travel advisor because it's a pen post. They would know that I'm a writer. Okay. Travel business owner, entrepreneurs, quote, pet surgery. Uh, peak post, good, a memory from personal and a good morning post. Okay, good. Relaunch, good friend, dates her husband. That's cute. Upcoming cruise, my vacation, and what I did on a cruise. Okay, good, good, good. How many of you, just by doing this exercise, realize you got work to do? And, and now you see why you're not <laughs> growing as fast as you could be. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Sharice, I see your hand up. Yes, I have a question. When I talk about personal uh, freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom, I do get um, some response. You know, um, they want to know more information. And when I get down to showing them um, the opportunity, they will come back and say, I thought it was something else. I don't know what something else could be, but when they realize it's me talking about, uh, well, not really me talking about, but when they find out the business is travel, they're no longer interested. I'm not sure if it's something else that I should show them or ask more okay, questions. Okay, so let's take it step by step. And okay. this is going to be, um, and I'm glad you, you brought that up. This is going to be great training right now, what we're about to get into for as a leader. So now we're going to switch gears, switch gears just for a moment because I want to address what she's saying. I can easily just say, oh, well, you should do this, do this, do this, do this. But honestly, I have no clue what Sharice is doing by what she just told me. She just gave me a general response to what she's doing. She ain't really even say what she's doing. So when you are coaching someone, 
you can't help them unless you know exactly what they are doing. So my first question, so watch how I get to the, the nuts and, and, and bolts of this issue with Sharice. So Sharice, come off mute. So let's assume you did a post talking about financial freedom, personal freedom, time freedom. And what is it? Are you putting a call to action in there? How do you know that someone is interested? Uh, I asked them to let me know if they're interested. How? Uh, by commenting. I okay. said comment, comment below or inbox me. Okay, that's mm -hmm. good. Make sure... It's fine if you say comment below, but that should not be what the only thing you should say. Because then if nobody comments, then the general assumption is nobody's interested. But because you say comment below or private message me, now people may be thinking, oh, she must've got a whole bunch of people who private messaged her. But never ever, ever say just comment below. Because if no one comments, then people think, okay, nobody's interested, all right? So, and I did text and I did text though. And I made a, a I made a reply and I say I text you. So if they say they needed more information, I I would say if I had their phone numbers, I would say I text you, uh check your phone, I sent you a text. So, okay. So mm -hmm. let's say the person inboxed you on Messenger and they said they were interested. How do you respond? I would uh ask them um when would it be a good time to talk mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that I had their uh, phone number? Okay, and so right there. Eh. Mm -mm. So if I'm a, a stranger, I don't know you. We just, I'm following you on Facebook and you have this post talking about freedoms and I'm interested in the freedoms. And then I inbox you and say, hey, I'm interested to learn more about, you know, what, what do you have to offer that's going to help me get these freedoms? And you just turn around and ask me for my number. I'm not giving you my number. I don't know you from a can of paint. That's not a comfortable place. Stranger danger. So here's what should happen. This is why you're not getting the response that you want. What you should do is say, Listen, I'm gonna tech, I'm gonna send you a couple of videos that well, actually, if your specific post was about freedoms and like it's very, very clear that it's a business opportunity, then I'm gonna go ahead and immediately just send the big picture video. And I'm gonna say, here's the information. Let me know if this is something you're interested in learning more about, and then we can schedule a time to talk. Now, why am I not sending preview ITA and preview rep in this scenario? I'm not, the preview ITA and preview rep give people the concept of the business, right? And so because if her post was very specific that this is an opportunity, she has a business opportunity, it's in travel, and you can get personal freedom, time freedom, then there's no need in me sending preview ITA and preview rep to show them the concept of the video. No, she already knows from the post that it's a travel opportunity business. So she go right to the big picture video, right? But if her post was more, uh, what's the word? Not as clear, just kind of ambiguous. And you're like, well, I wonder what that is. Then, yeah, now I, I, I can send the preview ITA preview rep and say, you know, check this out. Let me know if it's something you're interested in. And if so, we can schedule a time to talk. But to jump right in and say, what's your phone number so we could talk? Most people are not going to be responsive to that. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? Something that I also do is introduce myself a little bit. I love the voice clips. So I don't. Um, I rarely type messages out nowadays. So when I'm speaking to a prospect, I use the voice clip. Let's say they commented, they wanted information, they were interested. When I send them this voice clip, they get to hear me. 
A lot of people are getting spammed. They don't trust people. So they hear my voice. They hear that I'm a real person. They get to hear that I'm excited. And I also just share a little bit about me first, just to make them even more comfortable. I would love to share more information with you. Um, I love this business. I'm coming up on my five-year anniversary. It has changed my life. I, you know, I would love to share more information with you. So the voices yeah. are great if you guys aren't using those. Exactly, exactly. And I have, here's the thing. Your, the note section of your phone is your best friend. So literally I have a whole, I'm looking for it probably while I'm looking for it, I'm not going to find it. <laughs> but I have like a whole thing that I just literally copy and paste. And it's just like Director Brown says, you know, you know, thank you for your interest in my business opportunity. You know, I've been doing this for six and a half years. I was able to retire my husband and myself, um, you know, now have a team of over 3000 people. This opportunity may or may not be for you, but you know, here's a 10 minute video to take a look at. Let me know if it's something that you're interested in. Or again, if the post was kind of ambiguous and not crystal clear that it's a business and it's travel, I'll say here are two short videos. Take a look at it. Let me know if you're interested in it. Now, anytime I send someone a video and someone asks, uh, where do you find the videos? It's in your mobile app. If you do not have the Planet Marketing mobile app, you need to go to your back office and I'm sure we have some new people on here, so I'm not going to assume. Hold on. Let me go here. Can I say something? Yes. Now, um, I do have a question on that part. I know I've been um, actually trying to find myself. I've been doing a lot better than I was before. Um, this is my second time coming back in, but this time I didn't get to get the big accomplishment in planning marketing um but this time i have a lot of people a lot of people on my list in planning marketing but the part of trying to get them to get accomplished of getting them become business partners i have got a lot of people to their interested and stuff like that and they send the video and then you try to reach back out to them to see where they are and then not getting an answer back or have it communicated back so that's wow. kind of what I so Deanna, I could I could tell you right now uh, why you're not getting the response because I checked out your page today. I can't even tell you're in the travel business. You look like you push makeup. That's your problem. Well, I have two different ones. The one of the hotel and the other one. So I have two Facebook pages. I'm, one I'm just telling you the the page that I went on that you messaged me from when I go to that page. All I see is makeup. So if you were prospecting me about this travel business, I wouldn't take you serious because I can't even tell that you're in a travel business. Okay, so I'm watch serious. that watch that video um, that I shared and that will help you with that. Janae? So my question is like when you do your... Um your business post what i found on my which i do a, like throwback thursday and i would intertwine it with something to pique their interest to get them to to know what i'm doing um and then i just have others where i just flat out we like do a call to action for but mm -hmm. i notice on those business posts my algorithms are significantly lower than mm -hmm. any of my other posts <laughs> which really is so crazy i've yet to figure out why that is the case but do you happen to know why that is? Well, some people, here's the thing. I understand the whole algorithm thing being low, but that doesn't mean that people aren't seeing it. They're just not commenting and liking it because they're not ready. Because they know if they like and comment on that post, you're probably going to jump in their inbox. And they're just not ready to commit. But I promise you, they are seeing it. So kind of don't even think about what the algorithm is saying or doing or whatever. People are seeing it. I have people who commented on my, or not comment, but reach out to me random in my inbox and say, hey, I'm interested in your travel business. And then when I, I've never heard of them before, they've never liked, they never commented. And then when I get on the phone with them, they'll tell me they've been following me for years. And I'm like, wow. 
So don't pay attention to the algorithm as far as that is concerned, Janae. The people that are, there's people that are looking, but they're just not commenting because they're not ready to start the business yet. But see, if they comment on a travel post or something like that, you ain't gonna jump in their inbox for that. So they're comfortable with doing that, but that's why. Kimberly? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Director Tanisha, one of the mindset changers uh, for me was when you um, had a discussion about the two out of a hundred uh, exposures. Mm -hmm will say yes. Mm -hmm. And that for me changed my whole mindset because it made the no's make sense. And mm -hmm. it made me um, peak more people based on that. And so I love that um, scenario. And it just, it was a game changer for me, for my mindset. Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. So basically what she's talking about is this, is, this is again, managing your expectation. Two out of every 100 people that you speak to about this business will get started right away. Last night, they were on their knees praying and asking God to make a way for them to still pay January's rent because they haven't paid it yet and they're behind. And then that next day, you reached out to them about this opportunity and they're like, thank you, Jesus, sign me up, I'm in. He answered my prayers. Two out of every 100 people that you speak to. Five out of every 100 will never ever join the business no matter what. It's just not for them. They're not business-minded. They know they're gonna quit, that they never finish anything that they started. It's just not for them. So do not try to convince people when they tell you they're not interested. It's not for them. And it's okay, because somebody got to give you the massage on the beach when you get to Jamaica. <laughs> somebody got to carry your bags up to your room. Somebody got to deliver our Amazon packages. What would the world look like if everybody was an entrepreneur? It would shut down. There'd be no truck drivers. There'd be no, nobody cooking food. There'd be no farmers. There, it's not for everybody. 93 out of every 100 people that you speak to will need either more time or more information. 93 out of every 100 that you speak to will need either more time or more information. These are the people that are, you know, you got them on a three-way call, they like what they heard, but it's the beginning of the year, they're broke, reach out when they get their taxes. You got them on a three-way call, answered all their questions, they love it, but I'm in school getting my master's, once I get this degree, then I'll be ready. I got them on a three-way call, answer all their questions. They love the opportunity, but it's the summertime. They're running around with their kids and they're like, as soon as the kids are back in school, I'll be ready. It's always something. Got them on a three-way call, answered all their questions, loves what they see, but they're in real estate school. So they can't do it right now. So they need, and those people, it may take them six months to a year to join the business. Realistically, the 93%, it may take them six months to a year, sometimes longer before they join the business. So what does that mean to you? You have to consistently prospect and attract people every single day because the people that you share the business with today may not join until July. And the people that you shared the business with last summer will join this month or next month. So you have to constantly plant those seeds because you don't know when they're going to harvest. So that's what... something really, really quickly because it just popped yes. into my head. It made me think about um, different stores having sales. For example, Fashion Nova, right? Fashion Nova will send you a text message, an email, message you on Facebook. And just because you don't buy something from them, they don't stop sending you text messages. They don't stop sending you emails. They're still going to market their business. And eventually, you're going to see something that you want. So we continue to market our business. And eventually, that person may say, I'm ready now. But if you stop marketing your business, you stop putting it out there, 
they don't know that you're still in business and that they can come to you. Absolutely. Norma? Thank you so much. I didn't want to um, make it go too far before I get to ask the question. So you said whenever they, they, you put up the, um, Sherry's put up the post and now they are in our inbox, your advice is to send them the video. Do you not get their number first? Because I noticed that when I send, the, send it to Messenger, it pops up in my email that the person want more information and I, and I have no clue who's the person. Yeah, so now I lost different. that opportunity. But no, that's different because then they're saying that they want the information. We're, the scenario that I gave is Facebook. When someone reaches out on Facebook that you don't know, they're not in your contacts, you don't have their phone number, you cannot send them the, the the mobile app will allow you to send the videos in messenger but the mobile app will not track whether or not they watch the video it's only if you email or text someone the video will the mobile app track it i don't care about the tracking because i'm a professional and if i send you information i'm going to follow up with you regardless of what a mobile app tells me and the follow-up should be within 24 hours of sending them the information you don't wait days and weeks and months. If you send someone a video today, you should be following up with them within 24 hours. Don't wait for them to respond back to you. You just hit them up and assume, hey, after having watched that video, is this something that you're interested in learning more about? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Destiny? Hi, yes. Um, I think you touched on this a little bit last week about like, why would somebody want to join one side of the business and not the other? Like, what would you trust someone who didn't believe in the travel? But what if one of your prospects um, is adamant about only wanting to do travel? Do we still push them towards the marketing side or what? You no, know? absolutely not. When they're on the three-way call with a senior business partner, the senior business partner is going to make sure that that prospect understands both sides of the business. And so if after they've been presented with both sides of the business, if they decide they just want to do the travel side, then that's what we're going to sign them up for. Yep. Christine? Great evening, everybody. Um, the conversation that was being had of Fort Norman and reminded me of something that Mr. Moore said on the um, basic training this past Wednesday. I had never heard it before. But he said, always keep at least 10 in place. Every week you want to have at least 10 people that you're building rapport with, that you're prospecting. And if you keep those people, you know, in play, building rapport with them, eventually you're planting the seed, you're nurturing it, you're watering it, you're cultivating it, and, stay, and stick with them. Um, Mr. Moore, I mean, Mr. White said, you know, you want to ask about the dog, ask about the kids, ask about the last vacation. Every time you talk to them, bring up something so they know that you care, address them by name. And that way you're building rapport, even before sending a video or anything like that, get to know the person and not just look at them like a number. Absolutely. Absolutely. Last night I was at a wine tasting that my neighbor had. And there were several entrepreneurs in the room. And then after the wine tasting, we played a couple of games. We exchanged business cards. So what did I do today? Send them all friend requests on Facebook. The ones that I had, um, you know, got their business cards. And then I'm also going to text them and, you know, hey, it was nice meeting you. Just to let you know, I sent you a friend request. We need to keep in touch. Da, 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 da. I'm not prospecting them about the business right now. But I am adding them to my list. I am going to go through their pages and like and comment. And, and just like Christine said, I have on my whiteboard uh, something that says uh, hot list. And these are the people that I'm constantly staying in touch with on social media to build that rapport. So that's how you want to work it. And then I have local lists. So for those that I met last night, they live local. Guess what? I do a PBR at my house every Wednesday. So at some point, I'm going to invite them to my home for my PBR because they're, they're close by. If they came up for a wine tasting, they'll come up for a business opportunity about travel. 
And actually the girl that hosted it, I did a presentation for her and her husband and they were interested. So I'm going to revisit that with them because if she can get that many people to come up for a wine tasting, it was like 12 to 15 people there. Guess what her launch is going to look like? All right. All right. So moving on. Oh, and the other thing. Well, the next thing. No, the other thing. So again, do the three scroll rule and also do this with your new business partners. They're brand new. They've never used social media before. So you're going to need to, oh, in your privacy settings. Thank you. I almost forgot that. Very, very important. Just like Director Brown said, number one, your page should be public. If you're a secret agent, you're a broke agent. How are people going to find you if your page is public? And I don't want to hear, oh, I don't want, no, weird people. Then don't put stuff out there that you don't want people to know about you. Some of y'all share too much information anyway. Just saying. <laughs> if you are sick, you got the flu, the cold, keep it to yourself. Don't put that on social media. Don't put anything negative on social media. Nobody wants to do business with people who have issues. You sick? Honestly, I care, but nobody else cares. They don't. They're dealing with their own stuff. So don't put anything negative. If you have beef with someone, oh, I just told my age because I said beef, Director Brown. If you have an issue or a uh, disagreement, you had words with someone, do not send subliminal messages in your posts. It's so childish. It shows your lack of emotional intelligence. That person know you talking about them. Somebody, some other people, your downline know who you talking about because they got wind of it. Don't do that. Rise above that. Because you will kill your business. And you don't want people judging your character by a weak moment you had and you went off on somebody on social media. Just even the subliminal messages. Don't do it. Just get, matter of fact, if you have words with somebody, get off of social media. Go do something else. Calm down where you have a clearer head and then you can get back on there. But don't, I don't care if you have a fight with your man or your woman. Don't put that out there. Director Brown, can you speak on that? I see it, it all the time. Uh, yeah, and it's like, um, you're looking for people to partner with you. So one post you have, oh, I can give you seven additional streams of income. And the next post is, oh, my baby daddy, ooh, ooh, ooh. Nobody, if anybody was interested in those seven additional streams of income, they're not anymore. Because why would they want to do business with somebody that has drama? Like if you have drama in your personal life, they like, I don't want that to affect me. If I'm going to be working with you in business, I don't want to be involved in that drama. Everything doesn't have to go on Facebook. Some people put everything. I still see even with other leaders sometimes. I'm like, this that didn't need to go on Facebook. So don't put everything on Facebook, you guys. Remember, you want people to see that you are a serious person, that you are a, a loving, inspirational, encouraging. One post of you complaining, one post of you even being sad. Like, let's say you go on, oh, I'm so sad and I'm just, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I want to partner with you. Like if you're not mentally, you know, together, how are you going to be able to help me in this business? We all go through stuff. We are all dealing with stuff. Facebook will never know what I'm going through. God is going to know. Facebook is not going to know what I'm going through. So do not post any 
personal issues or anything, you guys. Call somebody, talk to somebody. Destiny said, get a journal. Don't I let like Facebook that. be your journal. Yeah. Um, and regarding your privacy settings, so your page should be public. You should hide your friend requests. I'm sorry, hide your friends list. Hide your friends list. I should not be able to go to your page and see everybody that you're friends with. Because guess what? Somebody like me is going to go through your friends list and friend all of your sharp people, right? Like if you're a teacher, let's say April's a teacher. I love prospecting teachers because they off on the summer, they like to travel and they're not paid enough. So if I know that April's a teacher, then guess what? Nine times out of 10, most of her friends are going to be educators as well. And if her pay, her friends list is public, I'm going to her friends list and I'm going to find all the teachers and friend them and I'm going to prospect them. Same thing that goes for the business partners who join the business and then they quit. I'm going to your friends list. You don't want to enroll your friends, you quit the business, guess what? I'm a friend of all the sharp people that I can identify in your friends list. Leroy? You know, there was one thing I wanted to say was, uh, I guess I think is make sure, you, make sure you know who's, I guess, putting stuff on your page or who's yes, uh, tagging your page. Because I think it was last week, which I hadn't checked my page, I think that for a while for that day, but Director Brown has sent a message said, uh, Leroy, you need to go check <laughs> need to go check your page. Cause there was some there that I, I definitely wasn't selling, but uh I didn't know it was on my page. I went back and looked, I was like, oh my God, let me go and take this down. I'm glad <laughs> you caught it. I was like, wait a minute, I don't sell this, I'll sell, I'll sell travel. Right. So make sure you know who's uh, posting stuff on your page too. Yeah, no one should be able to just post on your page without you approving it. That's a setting in privacy. If somebody tags you in something, your setting should be set up where you have to approve the tag. It should not just automatically be able to post to your page. You have to protect your page. Your, your personal page, that's your reality show. Um, and the other thing about the privacy settings, there was something else. Oh, this is so annoying. And if you're doing this, please stop doing it. Stop sharing other people's posts. What do I mean by that? Let's say Laura has a great business post. I like it. I'm going to share it on my page. It's a great business post talking about uh, earning income in the travel industry. I'm in the business too, by the way, but I like her post. So then I just share it. I'm now discrediting me and promoting her. Don't do that. Because then everybody's going to see that post on my page and now they're going to go to Laura's page. They ain't going to ask me about the business. They're going to go to her. Same thing with memes. Let's say you see a nice meme. Don't share it. You can save it to your photos and initiate it as an original post for you or even better, create your own meme with those words. Start branding yourself. What do I mean by that? And I'm going to share my screen. There are several apps that you can download to create memes, tons of them. The one that I use is Canva. There's a free version and there's a paid version. And so if I go to my projects and my folders, I got a folder called memes. Have two or three really nice pictures of you that you love and use Canva to create a meme. I saw this. Actually, no, a friend had said this. Time gives no refunds. Spend it wisely. I said, ooh, that's a meme. 
and I created it. Right? Sometimes I get things um, to create memes from the IMV. You can't talk power moves around people that don't have the same hunger or intentions as you. It will sound like you're bragging. Someone out there is holding their breath, waiting for you to fail. Make sure they suffocate. So anytime I create a meme, y'all laughing at that one. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Anytime I create a meme, usually it's to change the mindset of the people who haven't partnered with me yet. Right? So think about the people who they still stuck in that employee mindset. I'm going to create a meme that talks about why you shouldn't have the employee mindset, why you should, you know, be thinking about entrepreneurship or something like that. So my memes are always, um, most of the time, to change the mindset of the people who haven't said yes yet. I want them to look. Yeah. How many of y'all, where are my church people at? Has to start talking and you feel like he was in your house eavesdropping. Right? Like he was talking to you, right, Felicia? You were like, oh, you start slouching. You try not to make eye contact with him because he's talking about you. That's what I want. That's the impact I want my memes to have when people are looking at him like, man, she talking to me. Yeah, I should do this. I should do that. I shouldn't be counting on my job. I do need multiple streams of income. I should leave a legacy. I should. That's those are the types of memes. So, Books that you're reading, great places to get um, content to create a meme. Like I said, the IMV. When you go to the events, Mr. Bradley's always saying stuff. I'd be like, oh, that's good. My husband calls them planetisms. Those, those sayings that just make you be like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. But anytime, it's always to change people's mindset. Director Brown, you want to speak on that? I was going to mention the books. Oh, and yes, Norma said uh, Andy Cotham's Two Minute Reads as well, that those get posted. If you have the mobile app, you get that alert for Andy's mm -hmm. uh, Two Minute Reads, but reading. So not only do you get to get those different um, content and things that you can post on your page, but that also just helps you with your personal development. So everybody currently, if you're reading anything, it's probably Think and Grow Rich, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you're reading anything else, those are still going to be great things to, to help you to get that content to post. I see you, Paulette, every morning after the IMV, you should have a post. People are like, I don't know what to post. If you on the IMV, you got to post every single morning. Yep. Every single morning, you got something to post. And that reading is also just going to help you with your... um just being able to speak, right? Being able to speak professionally, the things that you read, that's going to be instilled in you. And so you're going to speak better. You're going to have better posture. So definitely read, read, read every single day. You guys should be reading. Yep. And the other thing is uh, the pinned post on your Facebook page, right? You are able to pin a post. That post should Say everything about you that you want that new friend to know. That you have a business, you're, you can book travel, you can help people get started, and that you're also looking for business partners. Mine is my story. It's my story. And there's always going to be a call to action. If you would like more information about our amazing opportunity, click this link to schedule an appointment, right? So this is my story. And then up here is where you would go to pin it. When you click on this, it gives you um, the option to pin that post. Now, me personally, I don't change my pin posts because it is just the epitome. It's my story. My story is not going to change and it's very powerful. Some of you are brand new, so you're still um, creating your story, but you're Remember I said the three scroll rule typically? Well, guess what? Sometimes you only get one and it might just be that pin post. So just in case the rest of your stuff you is not good, it's that pin post 
that needs to be impactful where they need to know that you are an entrepreneur, that you're looking for business partners and, and you know, you're using this opportunity for whatever. All right. Very important. Norma. Okay, Director Burke. So is that in compliance when we are doing all of them into one, talking about the travel plus partnering with people at the same time? I'm telling my story. Okay. All right, I guess. My story is my story. My story can't not be compliant. It's my story. But no, you don't want to... And my story, I'm not talking about in teletravel. I don't even mention a name. So that's, that's where you would get in trouble at. So look at your pen posts. If you're not sure if it's good, reach out to your director. They can look at it, give you some feedback, but come up with that pen post um, in case you only get that one opportunity to scroll where someone gets to know who you are. Okay, so now let's talk about the travel group. And this is where you're going to move on. I don't know how to raise my hand on this. I apologize. Before you move it's on, okay. um, mine's come up as featured, and I don't know how to change that. Featured, that's in a group. That's not your personal page. I've seen it on personal pages, and I was like, how did they do that? So I'm not, I'm not sure how that happens. Yeah, oh, I, don't know about that. I know there's featured pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. Typically, when it says featured, that's in a group. So you might have to go to YouTube University to get the answer to that question. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And, you know, Facebook is constantly making changes and stuff. So I can't keep up with everything that they're doing. So I'm not sure on that. Okay, so now let's talk about your travel group. Is there anyone on here who does not have a group that they created for their IntelliTravel business. Johanna, Destiny, and okay. Once, as a brand new business partner, once you come up with a name for your travel agency, you should create a group with the name of your travel agency. If you're also on Instagram, create an Instagram page just for your travel agency name. Facebook, you should have a travel group just for your travel agency. So that's step one. And actually, I'm pretty sure in that social media one-on-one -on -one video I did, I talk about that. This is where you're going to promote. Now, for compliance, you can't wear two hats at one time. So you're either wearing your travel agent hat or you're gonna wear your planet marketing hat, but you cannot wear two hats at one time. So when you have a travel agency group, you can never, ever, ever, ever wear your planet marketing hat in that group. You can't talk about recruiting people. You can't post flyers to attend webinars. All of that is non-compliant if you do that in your travel group. What do we sell as in teletravel travel agents? Travel, thank you. So that is all you can talk about in your travel group. You could post deals, promotions, specials, activities, excursions, group trips you put together, all of that good stuff you can do in there, but you can never ever recruit publicly in that group where it's obvious that you're recruiting. Now, let's say you have someone who is constantly commenting on your travel posts and they're, and they're like, oh, I wanna go here, I wanna do that. Okay, now you can slide in their DM and say, hey, have you ever considered becoming a travel business owner so you can do more of what you love? That's different. But I'm talking about actually in the group, on the post, you cannot be recruiting. Any questions about that? I want to make sure that's crystal clear so that you don't get a message from Amanda Restivo in compliance or 
a Jessica Sidemer. Because if they see it, they're going to call you out on it. Okay. Now, um, so let's talk about posting. So we got our calendars out. This is where we're going to get into the calendar stuff. When you are in a travel group, and this is how you want to manage your time, you, you are able to schedule your post for the whole week, for the whole month, actually. So let me pull up my travel group. And so when you go to post something, right down here, there's a little schedule post. So you just click on it and you put a date and time that you want it scheduled. And so if I go here, you see I have 16 scheduled posts already laid out, different things. So what you want to do on your calendar, and again, this is for time management. Pick a day of the week where either you're going to schedule posts for the week or maybe you just want to do it for the whole month. You might say, you know what? The first, the 30th of every month, I'm just going to schedule for the whole, the whole next month. I'm just going to take a Sunday or whatever and just do whatever works for you. But this is what you want to put on your calendar because failure to plan is a plan to fail. If you don't schedule the time to do these posts, they're not going to get out there. And now people are thinking that you're not active in your business anymore because they haven't seen you post in three weeks. So again, maybe it's every Sunday you create posts for the whole week. And do you need to post every single day? Have a post come out every day? No. But I would say three times a week minimum. Director Brown, what are your thoughts on how often, and I'm talking specifically about the travel group, how often do you think people should post about their travel business? I think that three times a week is, is, is pretty good. Um, one of the things that I also did a lot in the beginning, so my travel group, you guys, is what helped me get to where I'm at. My travel group was one of the, the first things that I did when I started my business. And of course, we cannot prospect in that group. Like we can't peak interest. And like Director Burke said, post those flyers and things like that. But one of the things that I did was I would do giveaways. And I might do that like once a month or something. Just do random raffles and, you know, what's the largest ocean? Just doing different games, right? Trivia inside that group. And then I also had add your friends and family to this group. And the more people you add to my group, that's going to give you more spots on the raffle. So although I'm not going to put peak interest posts in there, now I can go to all of my members inside of my group and I can send them a firm request. They recognize me from the group. I'm the admin in this travel group. I was just in here doing giveaways. Now I'm sending them a firm request. Now they're on my personal page. And now they get to see, oh, what else I got going mm. on? So I think those three posts a week is good. Um, mixing it up with some different types of things like the giveaways, maybe going live. Because if you do too much, it could actually be annoying. Mm -hmm. Now people might leave your group because you post them 10 times a day. Mm -hmm. um, people will leave your group. <laughs> so that three director Burke, I think is a good number. Mm -hmm. Yep. The other thing um, that I highly recommend that you do in your group when you do a post is in the comments to do the at everyone. You may not want to do it for every single post, um, but say like, for example, let me see, did I do it in this one? Yeah. So once I did the post, just like I do in the 40 or 40 or bootcamp group, I do at everyone so that all 6,000 or so people in this group get a notification. 
And since I started doing that, I'm getting so much more traction in this group. And I'm getting people who I've never even heard of, like this person. I didn't know, I don't even know her, right? But she said, thanks for the information. I've been thinking of going for some time now, right? I'm getting a lot of responses when I do the at everyone. So again, you may not want to do that for every post, um, but it's definitely a way to get some more traction to get people actually seeing the stuff that you're posting in there. So let's say, again, on your calendar, I want you to look at the rest of January and go into February. And what days of the week are you going to designate to schedule your posts either for the week or for the month. And I want you to fill in for all of January and the rest of February right now. Sharice? I was going to mention Facebook also have an admin assistant mm -hmm. in your group that they offer mm -hmm. to give you, um, to help you make posts throughout the week uh, that is not related to travel, but just saying, how's your week? What's one highlight? And you can schedule those posts as well if you're having trouble to come up with content. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. Um, there's also, it doesn't always have to be about um, promotions and deals and stuff. Like I said, I, I do video, right now I'm in this whole video thing. I found a great YouTube channel. So I do a lot of videos of different places. But there's a, a thing called travel trivia. You can Google it. Um, and you can sign up for it and every day they will send you a travel trivia. And so you can, that is something else that you can schedule. So you might have travel trivia Tuesdays or travel trivia Thursdays or something like that, just to kind of mix it up. And man, when I used to do the travel trivia, I used to get a lot of people participating in that. They love to, you know, test things out. And just like director Brown said, you can offer a giveaway, right? Whoever wins the travel trivia, um, you know, gets put in, whoever puts the right answer or whatever gets put in for a raffle for a three-day getaway or something like that using the IntelliTravel incentives. Destiny? Hi, yeah, so I can't remember which training it was that I watched because I feel like I've watched so many since I started. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> is it true that you should not open up your group until you've had like at least 20 posts on there? Like for us that yes. don't have a group created yet? Yes, yes, that was my training. Because if someone, if you just started, a, if I just started a, a brand new travel group, right? I'm brand new in the business, just signed up. My coach told me I need to create a travel group so I can start marketing my IntelliTravel business services. And then I add you and you get in there and you're like, there's nothing here. Or I invite you. And then you're going to look and see there's nothing in there. You're going to decline the invitation because you're like, why did she invite me to this? <laughs> this group and ain't nothing in there. So again, I go back to the three scroll rule. They should be able to at least be able to scroll three times and see content before you start adding people. So I usually tell people like, you know, put about 20 posts in there so that it looks like it's an established group and not a brand new group. Director Brown and, uh, oh, hold on, Lakeisha. Yes, Director Burke, and with the groups, do you like find it better to set the setting like the same way you have your personal page so people aren't just adding things in that group that aren't travel related? Absolutely. Nobody can post in my travel group but me. It's my content and my content alone. If someone does try to initiate a post, it flags me to approve it. Thank you. Uh, Destiny says, should you have a group and a business page? So the business pages are really only going to be relevant if you're willing to pay for ads. You cannot pay for Facebook ads if you do not have a business page. I have a business page, but I, I only if I run ads do I even really put something on it. Because when you run ads, it has to be connected to a business page. Your group is going to be your best um, opportunity to really build your business because now you can go live in there. You can do things. It's just so much more you can do in a group than you can do on a business page. 
So I don't recommend a business page unless you're willing to pay Facebook to run ads for you. Felicia? Yes, I had a question. Should your group be private or should it be um, open for anybody to look at? Do you want to make money? Yes, ma'am. Then it should be open. Yeah. I can tell you now, people who have some... There's a lot of people in planet marketing who are doing things that are non-compliant. And so they have their travel groups private because they don't want people to see that they're doing things that are non-compliant. Like offering people incentives to sign up, telling them that the startup is only $99 because they're going to pay the other $99 for them. Or if you sign up, I'm going to give you this three-day getaway. All of that is non-compliant. And the people who have private groups are typically doing something non-compliant like that. Or they're marketing in that group, knowing that they're not supposed to do that. And that's why they have their group private. Now, are there some people who just don't know any better and they have their group private? Yeah. But the seasoned people that have been in the business for a year who have those private groups, they're doing stuff that's not compliant. Matter of fact, some of you on here right now may have a director that's doing something that's non-compliant in a group that you are in. And if that's the case, I highly recommend you remove yourself from that group. Not everybody's going to do the right thing, unfortunately. But none of you will ever be able to say, well, I didn't know my director told me to be in this group and I see them giving away trips and stuff for people to sign up. Okay, well, I'm telling you now. They shouldn't be doing it and they know better. And that's why the group is private. So if you're in it, I highly recommend you remove yourself. I don't care if you got five new business partners as a result of it, everything duplicates good and bad. So guess what? Now your new business partner thinks it's okay to offer somebody a trip to sign up. And when they get busted and they say, well, you told them it was okay and that's how they came in. Now you're in trouble with compliance. I'm not losing my business for nobody. When you know better, you got to do better. And there's a lot of non-compliant stuff and people think they slick by doing it in these private groups. I did it in the beginning because I didn't know any better. But when you know better, you do better. I had private groups and we showing all the fam trips and stuff and I did it. And then when Amanda Restivo started talking about it, I stopped doing it. And yes, it was senior business partners that were leading it. Wrong. Leading their flock down the wrong path. Don't do it. Aisha and then Dawn. I found it. <laughs> the raise your hand icon. Uh, <laughs> um, but I haven't, at my post, I haven't, um, my group, I haven't made it public yet. Like I haven't shown it. I haven't made it public and resourced it yet um, because I wasn't sure about the compliance thing. But I just wanted to confirm, um, I get a lot of different answers for this, but you're not supposed to personally say, well, if you join my group, I'll give you a trip. But if you, you can say that if you bring up, if you bring another member, that, that doesn't go against a compliance if you give them a treat for that like if you give them a gift for that if they bring another They're helping member. add people to your group yeah that's fine you can okay. do an incentive that's what director brown was saying offering incentives for people who add people to help build up your numbers in the group that's perfectly fine okay the, the non-compliant part is when you offer someone an incentive to sign up to partner with you that's where the non-compliance comes in okay dawn Okay, so with this stating that, um, you know, things shouldn't be posted in a private group. So say I have a group now and it's private, you can't change it back. So now I have to basically start a new group from scratch. That's your choice. Okay. That's your choice. 
Yeah, Facebook does not allow you to go back and forth, back and forth. I think you could change it one time and that's it. Is that correct, Director Brown? Because I know- I It, think it is. I haven't changed mine in forever. I remember before you had a certain time frame. Like if you changed it from private to public, you couldn't change it again for 30 days or 60 days or something like that. But that was a long time ago when Facebook is always changing stuff. Right. So I'm not sure if that is still the case. Right. It is not. Once, if you're private, you can't go back public. It won't let you anymore. I just went to look at mine to see. Okay. So yeah, so now it's it's, it's up to you. It, I mean, if you have thousands of people in there, you might as well just leave it. Um, but you just got to keep adding people to it. But it's just unfortunate. Why would you have a business and you have it private? And your goal is to find more clientele, right? Somebody might have heard of Lux Platinum Travel. I want them to be able to go on Facebook and search for it. But if my group is private, they can't even search for it. It's not even going to come up in the search. You do have the option of making your group visible or, mm -hmm. or not visible. So people can search for it if they search if for the name. Visible. They just can't see the post until they join. Right. And if there's a really good trip or whatever, now they ain't going to see it. If I can't see what's posted in the group, why would I join it? All right, Leroy? That's, that's probably where I need help at because I don't know how to create a group and then who to have in the group. Once it's I create in the one. video oh. I sent you, Deanna. That YouTube okay. training video? Yeah, it's in there. I'm 90% I'm sure I walk you through how to create a group. But if it's not, go to YouTube University, how to create a group on Facebook, and you'll probably have hundreds of videos that come up. And let me say this to all of you. I don't know how should never, ever, ever be an excuse for you. Because when you have access to YouTube, you can find everything. I didn't, we didn't have basic training when I started. There was no IntelliTravel University when I started. There was no Planet Marketing PowerPoint when I started. We didn't have the mobile app when I started. Everything I learned, I had to figure out on my own and I would go to YouTube. How to invite at network marketing meetings and stuff like that, YouTube. Attraction marketing, that wasn't even a word when I started. It became a word and then I started researching it. So everyone, you know, take, you are the CEO of your business. You have to take the initiative to find the stuff of whatever you need. And I know we're going over our time, but because I'm recording this live in our group, I'm going to keep going through everything. But if you need to get off because you got to get up early, um, I understand that. But I do want to get through all of our Thing. So I'm going to take uh, Leroy and Sharice, and then I need to make it through the rest of the things we need to talk about. Leroy? Well, you, you answered the question now. You, you already covered it. I just oh, got okay. to go, go search it for myself, so no problem. All right. All right. So, so now you should have on your calendar when you're going to post in your travel group for all of February, I'm sorry, all of January and all of February, whether you're going to do it weekly and schedule those posts or monthly, totally up to you, whatever's gonna work with your um, availability. And let me say this about the calendar. Here's the other thing I need you to put in there. If you work a full-time job, I need you to block that on your calendar for all of January and all of February. If you work nine to five, block that. That you work nine to five. If you work three to 11, block it on the calendar. Again, we're filling out all of January and all of February. This is how you're going to be creating your DMO. Eight a.m. Y'all should have IMV in there. Oh, I meant to take a picture of mine.
Wednesdays at 7 p.m., basic training. That should be on the calendar. Good night, Deanna. Tuesdays at 10, Zoom team meeting with Mr. Moore, team Zoom. Again, you're filling out all of January. Is, 10, is, a, is that 10 o'clock a.m. or p.m.? P.m. Eastern Standard Time? Yes, ma'am. Team Zoom with Mr. Moore every Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It should be on your calendar scheduled. The IMV, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, should be on your calendar scheduled. Basic training every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, should be on your calendar scheduled. Again, we're completing all of January and all of February. This is how you're going to create your DMO. Your weekly meeting. You want to go to your mobile app and I'm gonna share my screen. When you go to your mobile app, you want to click on Info Center, Company News, and you need to find where your weekly meeting is for your city. If it is within driving distance, hour, two hours, you should be at that weekly meeting and it should be on your calendar and you should be there every time it's happening. If it's happening weekly, you should be there weekly. If it's bi-weekly, you should be there with guests. That should be on your calendar. If you have any personal things that are non-negotiables for you, they should be on your calendar. If you go to church every Sunday, block it on your calendar. If you have to pick your kids up from the bus stop or from school, put it on your calendar. Again, we're filling in all of January as well as February. If you have, what are some other things, Director Brown, that you have blocked on your calendar that I might not be thinking of? I think she logged off, Director Burke. No, she's, she's right there. Now. I'm looking at her. I was like, me? I'm, oh. <laughs> um, so my personal development. Uh, so reading. I have my my time blocked off for when I read. Even so with when I thought about, you know, blocking off the work day, I still work a full-time job, right? So Director Burke does planet full-time planet marketing. I still work a full-time job. So for some people, they're like, well, I have to go to work at eight o'clock. I don't have time to do nothing. Then when I get off at five, I have to. I got to log into work at eight o'clock. So I wake up at 530 and I do things from 530 until it's time for me to log into work. So I have, and for me, I do meditation. I do affirmations. All of that stuff is blocked off in my calendar, my readings, when I'm going to make my first post, when I'm going to do my follow-ups, when I'm going to make peak interest. There's an app that I use. Um, it's called Seconds. The app is called Seconds. And of course, you can, for me, I set timers for everything. That helps me to keep going. And now I'm not going to get distracted. So I have a time, a timer for when I'm making my posts, a timer for when I'm doing my reading, a timer for everything. And I don't know, let me see if I can, you probably can't really see it, but it's literally a timer for everything in the morning is a certain time that I have to make my smoothies, my tea, to do my readings, make my posts, to work out, listen to a podcast, do trainings, the IMV. It's a set time for everything. And it goes off and now I have to move on to my next thing. So that helps me to stay 
on track. I'm not scrolling through Facebook. When I get on Facebook, I'm not scrolling. I'm on there because I got to send out some friend requests. I got to pique some interest. I got to do some follow-ups. And then I'm moving on to the next thing. So mm -hmm. I would say that personal development for reading should be on your calendar, on your planner. I do mine's at night. I do my readings at night and have all of that kind of in my brain while I'm sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, so I have that on there. I have my uh, affirmations. I'm really big on affirmations and just speaking positivity, even when it comes to being a director, being a goal builder, wherever it is that you want to be, speak it every single day. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I have that on there. And then, like I said, when I'm going to do my follow-ups, when I'm going to do um, my peak interest posts, when I'm going to do uh, three-way calls, all of that. And I think someone, I want to say Shamika, I'm not 100% sure, but her calendar was filled. And she had on there follow-ups, peak and interest. And I love that because it was already blocked off. I saw some people had color codes for their planners as well. Oh, the greens. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Real analytical. I saw those color codes and that was good. But everything, some people just put the IMV and the basic training and um, the team call. But what about all those other things, right? Making your travel posts, scheduling your posts, all of that stuff has to be into that planner as well. Making absolutely, Josephine, um, exercising, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I have a time blocked off. For when I am as a mother, I block a time off on my schedule where this is time for me with my daughters. I'm doing homework. We're doing dinner. It's family time. That is blocked off on my calendar. Everything is scheduled. Absolutely. Let's add to that the birthdays. How many of you go through Facebook and when it tells you it's someone's birthday, you use that opportunity to wish them a happy birthday and peak them? You got to schedule time to do that. That's on here too. Send happy birthdays. <laughs> and I'm not going to get into the whole birthday thing. Maybe we can add that later, but we're already, it's going really late. Um, but doing the birthday should be scheduled. Um, going live once a week. I want you all to identify one day a week. If you could do more if you want, but minimum one day a week, which day of the week is going to be your day to go live. And I want you to schedule that. Again, all of January, for the rest of January and all of February, where are you going to fit that in? One of the great things to do, uh, you know, when people wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is grab their phone and go to the bathroom. So your good morning post. Everybody should do a good morning post. You'd be surprised that people start to follow you because of your good morning post, because it just, especially if you say something positive, an affirmation or a scripture or whatever, something positive in the morning, that is how you become an influencer as well. And it'll help with your algorithm. The key is to make sure everybody that comments and says good morning, you must respond back to them. So going live once a week, we got the birthday posts. What time are you going to do that? You have the times of when you're going to um, schedule your posts in your travel group. Here's a big one, announcing new business partners. Now, it is understood in my organization, Team Lux, I can't speak about J.P. Watkins team. I can't speak about Shedrick White's team. I'm talking about our team. It is understood that anybody can share an announcement of a new business partner. So if you go, in, if Director Brown enrolls Bethany tonight, I can take Bethany's picture and her, um, her bio and I'm going to post it on my page. I'm not saying that I signed up, Bethany. What I'm going to say is congratulations to our newest business partner, Bethany Bordeaux, in her words, da 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 da, da. And then at the end, I'm going to do a call to action. If you would like more information about this opportunity, private message me for more 
you know, if you want information on how you can gain financial freedom, private message me for more information. But I'm going to tweak the call to action to match why Bethany signed up. So Bethany says that she joined this business because she wants to be able to leave a legacy for her children. Then my call to action is going to be, if you would like to leave a legacy for your family, private message me. So I'm always going to tailor it to why that person. So when you are asking your new business partner for their bio, tell them, say, listen, I need you to send me a quick bio, five to six sentences, your name, where you're from, your background, your family. And why did you decide to become a travel business owner? That's the most important part of the bio. Latoria? Latoria, did you have a question? Okay. So I would suggest, this is just me, and Director Brown, you can give your, um, your thoughts on this. I typically tell people to announce a new business partner three times a week. And do not do group announcements. Don't take three people and announce them all at one time. I hate when people do that. It is so obvious. If you are in network marketing, people know no one's signing up three people at a time. So don't do it because you look like you're lying. But if you spread it out, and let's say you announce a new business partner on Monday, and then you announce another one on Thursday. Thursday is always a great day. If you don't do any other day, do it on Thursday. Why? Some people get paid on Thursday. Most people get paid on Friday. And then maybe you do one on the weekend. But three times a week, you should announce a new business partner because it shows momentum. And people are going to be like, wow, that business, that, that company is growing. Again, you're not saying you signed that person. But again, if Crystal Brown enrolls someone tonight, isn't that our new business partner? If Lakeisha signs somebody, that's my new business partner. That's David's new business partner. That's Ann's new business partner. So I'm just grabbing it. Congratulations to our. Now, if I personally enroll them, shout out to my new business partner. So I'm not lying. I'm saying our when it's not mine. And I'm saying shout out to my new business partner. Director Brown, what are your thoughts on three times a week? Or do you have another number? What works for you? So even with the three times a week, one of them could even be a promotion. Mm -hmm. So let's say if you're doing three um, announcements a week, you can do two of new business partners and one of them can be a promotion. So let's say that someone just became a bronze builder or someone just hit director, you know, gold builder. Shouting them out is also going to show that there's momentum happening in your team, in your organization. Again, it's not saying that this is your new bronze builder, somebody that you just personally sponsor. Shout out to so-and-so who just became a bronze builder inside of our organization. This And gold is good because now you can put in those bonuses and what they now have access to, those overrides, and you're able to peak interest with that. They just Absolutely. unlock, you know, the matrix. They now have access to 118,000, you know, all of that residually. And that's really, really good as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good one. Yeah, those promotions. But again, we're working on your DMO. You need to schedule the time to do that or else you're not going to do it. So what day of the week are you going to announce a new business partner or promotion? And do that consistently, again, for the rest of January. And I want you to do it for all of February. Lakeisha? Just real quick, because even as we're going over these, um, what we should be scheduling in our DMO, I'm finding like a lot of the planners don't have like the, the time slots for, you know, the extra hours where I may, does anyone have any recommendations? Like mine's only goes to nine, for instance, but I know I'm going to be up past nine doing some of those DMOs that I need to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, mine only goes to, cause I got the one from planet marketing. Okay. Um, you know, so mine stops at seven. So yeah, there's some things. I'm just going to write it in the note section or on the side, or okay. I might, I may also have it listed in my, you know, my month at a glance. So it just kind of, you got to do okay. what you got to do. 
But either way, it's still on my, and here's the other part, it's on my phone calendar. Because that's where you're going to be able to set your timers and stuff is on your phone calendar. The reason why you're putting it here is because I need you to see your productivity. When you complaining that you ain't hit Gold Builder yet, I'm going to be like, show me your calendar. And your calendar is going to show why you have not hit your goals. Peaking, right? You should have a weekly goal for peaking. And that's something we're going to talk about um, in this boot camp. But when are you peaking? Right? A lot of people that I've had one-on-ones with, they got a weekly goal minimum, 70. 70 people a week. If you want to break it down daily, 10 people a day if they wanted to do that. But when are you peaking? Are, is that something that you're going to do between seven and eight in the morning before you go to work? Or is it something that you're going to take your lunch break and get your 10 peaks in during your lunch? Or are you going to wait until you know nine o'clock just before bed? But you got to schedule the time to peak. You got to schedule the time to do the follow-ups. So again, you're filling up your calendar for the rest of January and all of February. This is your DMO. So now you're going to have on, you'll know exactly because Director Brown, you get a lot of people like, I don't know what I should be doing. Well, mm -hmm. your calendar should be jam packed with activity. Again, you have to start with your non-negotiables, the stuff you must do. You must go to work. You must pick the kids up from school. You know, you must block time for dinner if, if you're the cook of the, the family or whatever, right? Laundry. When is your laundry time? It got to be scheduled. You clean the house, schedule it. And whatever you have on your paper calendar, make sure you have it on your phone calendar because your phone calendar should dictate your activity. Like for me, if, if someone just kind of like random calls me, unless it's one of my directors, I'm not answering it. If I don't have a schedule, you're not on my calendar for me to speak to you at that moment, unless you are direct to me or you are one of my directors, you're going to voicemail. And then like the rest of the time on your calendar, once you get those non-negotiables, yeah, we talked about the inspirational morning, your morning post. So uh, so it's your travel post for your travel group, the birthdays, going live, announcing new business partners, your good morning post, um, your peaking, the announcement of new business partners and or promotions, all of that needs to be scheduled. Now, really quick, I'm going to show y'all something. The rest of the time, any blank spaces should be where you're scheduling three-way calls. That should be the goal. Any time else needs to be where you're scheduling your three-way calls. Now, I'm going to show you just real quick a sample this is April, 2018. At this point, I'm working the business full time. Okay, so this is my calendar is gonna look a little different than yours if you're still working a full-time job. But I have my non-negotiables on here. The IMV, pick up Jace. This is me picking up my son from the bus stop. I got church here. I got our weekly meeting here. I got the team call here. So guess what? Every other space, my, my goal every day was to fill every blank space up with a three-way call. If it wasn't a three-way call, it was meeting a prospect. If it wasn't meeting a prospect, it might've been an onboarding training where it says three W, these are three-way calls. Now, in the beginning, you're filling it up with your three-way calls. but Keep in mind, at this point, this is my third year in the business. I have a team of over 500 people at this point. So some of these are my three-way calls and some of them are my team that's duplicating. But my mindset was every blank spot, I am going to fill that up with a three-way call. 
And that is how I got to three-star director in my third year in this business. Cause that was always my mindset. The weekends, I'm a weekend warrior, three-way calls. That's what it looks like. Now, this week, this was the week after I went, um, after I left my job. I left my job on February 8th, I think, or 9th. And so this is my first week doing the business full time. There's no job check on Friday. This is, this is me. If I don't hunt, I don't eat. Again, here, I didn't even have the IMV and stuff on there, but it was blank. But again, Space Coast meeting, team Zooms. The goal was every blank spot, I need to fill that up with a three-way call. Every blank spot, that was my goal. And so if you have that mindset for your calendar, you can't lose. You can't lose. Director Brown, comments on that? Closing comments? Just that as you right now, you know, it's going to be all of your three-way calls that you're leaving, you know, blank and you should be really striving to get in those filled. But like Director Burke said, as you start to grow a team, I had to learn to block off that time. This time is for me that I'm going to fill up with three-way calls. So I blocked that on my calendar because I'm going to be committed to having my own three-way calls scheduled during these blocks. And I'll leave these blocks open for my team. So I'm glad that you hit on that. Right now is going to be you, but if you have a team, if you're, you know, have a desire to grow a team, you're going to still need to make sure that you're doing your part as well. Remember the speed of the leader is the speed of the team. So you still have to make sure you're setting the example, you're still peaking interest, you're still doing three-way calls and all of that. So you have that time blocked for you. And then you have that time blocked for your team to be able to help your team as well. Exactly, exactly. Any questions on how you're supposed to be filling your calendar for the rest of January and all of February? This is the DMO. This is it. This is like the main thing of what this whole boot camp is. And guess what? We're going to talk about PBRs too, because you should be doing those weekly. But we're going to have that on another conversation. But any questions? Y'all good? All right. All right. Well, that is it. Man, we went way over. But again, we're streaming live in the group. So if people who had to jump off, they're able to go back and watch this in the group. And um, let's make it a great week, productive week, a great productive week. And now you have the tool to ensure you are truly working your business and not doing busy work. It's the P, the S, and the three. All right, everyone have a great night and uh, we'll see you soon. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night everyone. Good night. All right, Good night. thank you.